We are live. Chickity check yourself before you rick rick riggity wreck yourself. Chickity 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 chick. Before you chick chick chickity. I'm sore. I don't know what you did in the bathroom, but I was it wasn't talking me. about the the push-ups and stuff that I did today. But you made eye contact and whispered, "I'm sore," like you said it all <laughs> sensual and shit. Like what the fuck? I didn't essential. do that. Like that's not my pro. I didn't make you sore. Being sore can be sensual. I know. I don't mean it in that way though. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns with Sean Buck Rogers in my frumpy ass shirt. What's up, guys? Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. I don't know if you know this about me. But not only was I a Green Beret, I hate saying that, that sounds douchey. What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. I don't know if you know this about me, but I was a cop too. It's terrible. What, the intro? Yeah. Why? Let's do it again and be natural. It's the best ones. Natural. Natural. Welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. In this episode, what's up guys, welcome to this episode of Beers and Breakdowns. Naturally, I'm going to tell you that I used to be a cop, and so this one means a lot to me. I actually really love this movie. It's so damn accurate, it's unreal. There's a couple phony ce like scenes, but every movie's got some weird shit to it, but this movie is so accurate. It just so happens that on patrol, my favorite partner was my homie GP, it was a Mexican dude. So it was like the same scenario. We had the same banter. He was a Marine, is a Marine. I was an Army guy. So it was us. It was This whole movie is pretty much me and my homie GP. I'm also Mexican. He is. I don't know if you guys knew this about Abel, but he's Mexican. So I guess say like, all right, so we're going to watch this and yada yada. All the stuff you usually say. What do I usually say? Never mind. <laughs> all right, guys. So now we're going to watch this <laughs> and all that stuff I usually say. Let's do it. Oh, uh, you're fucking useless sometimes. <laughs> So he's not gonna pull it right. <laughs> most of the most of the movie, I'm just gonna say positive shit. But this one, this one's got me. This shit, like, come the fuck on. This is a shootout with blanks. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens. Like. Ah, they're blank. So I'm just gonna walk towards this guy as he's shooting at me, mm -hmm. and just dot 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 dot. Cause I'm an actor, and I'm gonna win. Cause I know how the scene ends. <laughs> like, so, so that would never happen that way. No, like you got two guys fucking point blank shooting at you, and you're just gonna walk up to them like hoping you win a fucking duel. Like, what is this? Mm. Like, I don't want to get shot. That's the point. Is that I want to win the gunfight. Right. Not just fucking hope to God that you you like in this scenario, everyone's dead. I just walk towards you and shoot while you're shooting at oh, me. Shooting, and then yeah. We're all fucking getting shot. The car chase is super accurate. It's awesome. The pit maneuver, it's a sh it's shitty that uh, he just happened to back out like that. And then I'm not sure that I would have just like followed into the front of his car mm -hmm. and been face to face with him so they could just get out and start blasting me. I thought that was kind of a dumb move. But the biggest thing I issue I had with this is that they just walk up to guys shooting at them face to face and shoot them. It's like, right. come on, man. You would have got shot like a motherfucker. So unrealistic. Unrealistic. Okay. Like, take cover. And I definitely get out of the car because all their bullets are going to come in. But take cover behind the car so the engine block could stop it and then shoot back for sure. Even shoot while you're uh, going to the back. Like, I wouldn't say don't shoot. I would swing open that door and start dumping. But I'm also trying to get cover, too. Is the, is the door not cover? No. Because I see that a lot when, it, like, on TV. But I mean, like, on actual, like, Fox News. You know, when mm -hmm. somebody gets pulled over or something, the cops are in between that door jam. Like, the door's going to do something if they get shot. I'd it's, imagine that's why they're there. It's better, it's better than nothing. Oh, okay. But it's definitely not cover. Because mm -hmm. a bullet is going to go through a door for sure. See this? It's a ticket book. Inside of things called tickets. Sir, you cut citations every watch. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to these two idiots. <laughs> yes. I don't really know how to write. Uh, I do sign and draw pictures. Seriously. <laughs> Daniel Penn is the man. Yeah. So there's a lot going on here, and it's almost crazy that they made it so accurate that people 
they just see the friendly banter. Uh huh. But you don't. You miss. There's a whole subculture of police work that they're alluding to in this scene. As a police officer, you're you're like the sergeant will always want you to. Hey, man, you guys need to be writing tickets. You need to be proactive in this area because uh, people will complain like, oh, there's a lot of speeding going on in your area mm. and you need to stop it. So they'll be like, hey, write more tickets in there and get some more speeders to stop this person's complaints or whatever the fact. But the hitters and they're like, I'm talking to these two mm -hmm. because the, the, the cops that are proactive together and they just really want to get after it, it's a balance. So they hit a couple of things. The chick being like, Sarge, we write tickets every time. He's like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to these two. Mm -hmm. It's like, they're not writing tickets because, first of all, tickets are fucking lame. And they're looking for real crime. They want, like, there's the, they're the, the two, like me and my, my partner were, and there's a lot of cops that are. There's so many different types of cops. Some cops want to write tickets. Some cops just want to do their calls and be left alone and just answer calls. And then there's other cops that want to get as much crime and go after the the most dangerous stuff as possible. Mm -hmm. So, the ticket thing is alluding to the fact that they don't like to do the regular police work. They like to go get after it. Mm -hmm. And this whole movie is really like a a dream like scenarios for them over and over because they keep getting into it. Mm -hmm. And even in the, I worked in Denver and we used to get into it all the time. But shootings like this, where two one pair of cops is gonna get multiple shootings. All right. It's, it's unrealistic, but let's just say they're compressing gears into okay. the movie. But it was just cool because this scene's so accurate. It's like, hey, write some tickets, you know, you yahoos. And you'd be like, oh, yeah, sure thing, Sarge. But he knows you're going to go out and look for. But right? like they can talk to him like that. So the thing is, yeah, because the Sarge, it, he needs to be cool. And you don't always have good sergeants. I had a few. Um, Paselko, Horton. Um, who's some other fucking hitters? I want uh, anyway. I had like, I had a few like really good sergeants, and the cool thing is they become like your boys because they know like you're not going to do stupid shit. Mm -hmm. They trust you. Okay. So you guys could have that banter as long as you don't cross them and make him like have to be your boss and, and right. be a dick. You guys could have that banter and be cool with each other. Mm. And I had some really, really fucking good sergeants on there. So, like, way different from the military. Like, you can't. Yeah, you can't way even, different. Not even a hint of disrespect, even out of fun. You can't do that. Yeah, in special operations, it's more like this because everyone's kind of on the same playing field. Mm -hmm. So, the rank structure kind of goes away. But in the police department, the sergeant is the boss. Uh, but if you have a good relationship, which if you do good police work, you guys would be cool. You could joke, joke and talk shit. The important thing is they would not have talked shit to the sergeant in front of the captain oh okay because the captain's the sergeant's boss and the, you don't want to disrespect the sergeant and show that banter in front of the captain mm. because then it makes the sergeant look bad okay so you wait for the, the captain to leave and then you can talk shit and be funny with the sergeant mm. did you have to do these types of uh like meetings before every shift every or shift is roll shift? call oh, okay so at every shift before the shift you they call it roll call and uh they'll call out you know who's riding with who so that's when you know who you're going to be partnering with and then they'll tell you your area which typically you'll be just assigned to you'll have a normal assigned area mm -hmm. um, but if they need you somewhere else if you have a special assignment that's when they put it out uh, and then from roll call that's their chance to be like hey you know this is going on in this area or the detectives have this going on at this house so stay away from that house mm -hmm. uh, and then they'll just give kind of the rundown of what's going on and it's everyone's chance to like relax a little bit before getting out and getting in, getting into everything and mm. kind of like decompresses you for a second because you just get to, to bullshit with everybody for a while. Mm. Roll call is kind of like your woo-saw moment before getting out there and getting into it. Erase button. Two words. <laughs> you guys think you're gonna get them gunfighters now? Don't mean you can be dropping your calls. White boy. White boy. Ladies, I'm sick of holding up your end. Admit it, either guys. So, what? A rose call? Yeah. With a cinder block. <laughs> so what she said again is another thing that most people wouldn't know unless they were cops is that she said pick up your area we're tired of cleaning up after your shit or whatever she said uh -huh. so what she's saying is because they're always out trying to find crime and shit it's a balance right so being a good cop and this is why i love riding with gp because i was more the approach like 
yeah, people are going to get mad at us for dropping our calls. Like, I want to find the crime. Mm -hmm. But GP was like, hey, we could do both. We could handle our calls and handle our area and then we'll go we'll go hit it so he you know had that balance but what they're telling you is like every time they go get into a call it's going to tie them up for x amount of time mm -hmm. well when the calls come in for your area now those other two that have the area they're going to have to pick up those calls oh okay so domestic violence comes in and you're on a traffic stop you just made them go do that domestic violence, which is a shit ton of paperwork. Okay. Because you chose to stop a car and to get an arrest and to find drugs and oh, okay. get into like basically take yourself out of actually handling your area. Hmm. So really, really good cops will learn how to pick up calls and do the class twos, which is the proactive stuff mm -hmm. at the same time. Oh, and okay. it, it's hard to balance. So you have to get good at like handling your paperwork really fast and then going back in and picking up calls so your sector mates don't get pissed at you. Oh, okay. That was something I struggled with at first because I was like, I'm going to hit it. And I would just go after everything and I would find shit, but then my sector mates are having to pick up the slack because I wasn't handling a lot of calls. Oh, uh, so they're just mad at you? Yeah, so they get mad at you and be like, hey, dude, like it's cool you want to go out and get shit because every rookie does, but fucking handle your calls. That's crazy. You never know that because you just see cops driving around, but you don't you don't ever know where the fuck they're going. Because yeah. if their lights aren't on, I'm, I know you're not going to a call. You don't have anyone pulled over, but they're just like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? Well, where almost, are you going right now? You, every time you go to a call, you're ne you're not gonna have your lights on. The only time your lights are on is if the calls are code ten, which is it's an emergency. So like, if I get a call for domestic violence, like I'm not code tening it to that DV mm -hmm. unless it's like, hey, he's beating me up right now. Okay. But if he, it's just a report call, so I'm just going to be cruising to that person's house to take the report gotcha, and okay. then to file all the paperwork. But most of the time, people, you see cops, most of the time, they just want to be left alone. Mm -hmm. They got paperwork to do, and they're just trying to get the fucking paperwork done. So we'll go park somewhere, and people will be all freaked out like we're trying to give them a ticket. It's like, no, <laughs> guy, I got a fucking computer right here, and I got it ass load of paperwork from that one call i have to get all that done so i can get back out and try to find the fun stuff mm. and the fun stuff is just any kind of good crime like guns uh elite you know gangsters with guns illegal guns drugs those are all the big ticket ones to where it's like if you're getting illegal guns and stolen guns off the streets and you're getting drugs off the streets like you're making a difference but everyone has their thing that they like to find like there's one guy that just like to find stolen cars so he would like, <laughs> and not people driving him either. Like. Yeah, he just he would go through and run plates like hundreds a day to just find the stolen car and then have it towed. And he just liked to do it. So that's what he did. <laughs> he just found stolen cars and fucking. He he personally was probably responsible for returning like ninety percent of the stolen cars <laughs> in Denver. He found all of them, dude. He would go all night run cars, and he's like, "Hey, send me a tow. I got a stolen car." And then he'll be on to another one. Send me a toe. I got a stolen That car. sounds hilarious. It's like a dog that just likes to dig a hole. It's like a person who just likes to do this one thing for that's whatever how, reason. That's how all the cops are, though. You're going to find that one thing that you like to do, uh -huh. and then you're going to try to do it as much as possible because you, you're trying to find some enjoyment out of this job that, like, the job makes you do so much. Like, if a, a dead body or suicide or car accidents domestic violence it's going to make you do all that stuff mm -hmm. so that little bit of time that you have between calls you want to do something that you enjoy okay so if you enjoy i my thing was guns i didn't not saying i got a lot of them but i just loved when i did get them so i would always want to go find people that had guns mm -hmm. which a, a lot of the proactive cops guns is where it's at now i'm calling you out what's up you with my ass i'll put the motherfucking handcuffs on my motherfucking self and that's on the set. It'll be a pleasure beating your bitch ass. Taking off his belt? Yeah. <laughs> this shit's crazy. <laughs> oh, he's recording it? You like that? Ain't no wrestling match. You alright? You alright? You alright? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Couple of questions here. Does that happen? Is that something that you've heard about? I'm not saying if you've done it, but I mean it's happened. I we've there's like plenty of videos out mm -hmm. where they they do it. Ha <laughs> no, <laughs> I've I've honestly never seen anyone just drop their belt and get in a fight. But it's I've been close. I had a corporal back me off one time because this guy just kept coming at me, kept coming at me, and it's 
it's hard because people look at the badge and they just see a badge, but they don't care because if you do something, they win. Mm. So it's hard how people push you and they push you and they talk shit. And it's like, you're just ex expected to rise above it because you went through a police academy. Like, like I want to punch you in the face sometimes. Like you're talking <laughs> shit. Like I want to fight you. So have I wanted to do that? Absolutely. I've wanted to take my belt off and throw down. And I've gotten pretty close. And I had a corporal, Chris, and he was like, he's like, Sean, mm -mm, that's enough, dude. And I was like, I was like, all right, because mm, this guy had me. He was under my skin, and he had me close. And he was like, let's go. And he was the same thing. He was like, he's like, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And I was like, oh, dude. Because you feel like in that moment, you feel like this, like where you could you could like be on the same level and throw some hands and then it'll be cool after mm -hmm. because you're the one like that is making the decision as to whether or not it's going to be legal in that moment. Right. So you but it's wrong. Like you think you think you can get away with it, but it's like, man, you know, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to play out like this. You wish you wish you could do stuff like this sometimes because people are such douchebags, but no nah, it wouldn't it wouldn't work out and did you see that video there's a dude and uh he told his he just started scrapping with this guy they kept talking shit and he started scrapping it and then his his uh partner was recording the whole thing i always assume i'm recorded i yeah. always assume there's a phone on me there's a hidden mic if you just pretend like you're being recorded all the time then you don't have any issues yeah i was just like i'm always being recorded so i'm always gonna have to justify my actions so i was like and then the body cams, like body cams terrify cops a lot, but at the end of the day, they really do save, like they saved me when I did use it because one was the tasing incident and my, my body cam was on and you could see him swinging at my TO, trying to punch my TO. Another one where it saved me was I had to cut open a girl's bag because she wouldn't tell me the lock because she was under arrest. Uh -huh. So I was like, tell me the code to lock so I could search your bag before I take it to jail. And she's like, fuck you, man. So I was like, all right, tell me or I'm gonna cut it. And then I cut it. And then she complained that I would damage her property. Mm -hmm. And so they just went to my body cam and was like, clearly you should have just told them what the combo was and right. you've been fine. So the body cam saved me more more often than I was worried about it. But <laughs> have you seen that meme for Buzz Lightyear? Because there's that new Buzz Lightyear movie that's out. And it's all Buzz Lightyear looking like he about to turn his body cam off. <laughs> you sent me that shit. It was funny. I'll put the picture up right now so you guys can see it. But it's fucking hilarious because he absolutely looks yeah. like a juiced out fucking corn fed white boy cop that's just about to be like, yeah, I'm gonna handle that, this. The honestly, way. that that was one of the hardest parts for me about being a cop is people looked at me and just saw like a typical white guy being a cop. Yeah. Where I was like, dude, I grew up shitty. I grew up, you know, fighting. Like I did not grow up like this that you think. And they but they treated me like I was just this fucking I think I'm better than everyone white cop. And I was like, You guys fucking drive me crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. Like I that's why I couldn't do the job anymore because people just are so disrespectful to cops and they and I'm not that guy. So like I was going to get in a fight. Watch the street. Make sure no assholes come up here and kill us. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fucking Christ. <laughs> what a dick. You know, I see you guys out here You're being good little company men, aren't you? But you're doing the Lord's work. Mark my words. One day the LAPD is going to bend you over your black and white and they're going to fuck you up the ass. They are going to fuck you so long and so hard that you're going to want to eat your gun just to make it stop. That was the best spiel ever. Like, do you, that shit was so accurate. Like, the T.O. just being that fucking bitter T.O. and the way he yelled at the rookie. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yes, sir. Ah. Like, that's how they fucking are. That's how a lot of them are, dude. Like, that and that spiel about the department fucking you is true. The department... Well, all departments, I don't care, because Denver is the same fucking way. The, you're the man, you're the man, is you're getting the guns, you're getting the drugs, you're the coolest dude. The minute you do something that looks wrong, the fucking minute that you do something that makes them look bad, you're the biggest piece of shit on the planet. And I don't care how much good you've done, how many awards they gave you, they're going to bend you over and fucking take you to the house. Because the department will never take the back of a cop if it, like, is media attention and is going to make them look bad overall. Mm -hmm. Cops are expendable to the departments over their reputation with, uh, you know, society and 
they they just cower to the media. Right. Departments fucking cower to the media. But departments might, but I think the biggest overall problem is that when they see a cop do something and then they see him go to trial and he gets off. Like, I think people assume there's some sort of bias there somewhere, mm. even if it's not in the department, because ultimately they never get really prosecuted for anything that they did. They get tried, they get humiliated, they get media attention. Yeah, they get fired, but they don't go to jail for it. That's why I think it's like, they're two separate things. One of them is like the department not having your back does not equal that cop like getting actually convicted for something that he did. Mm. That rarely happens. I mean, at least from what I've seen. I mean, and it, it shouldn't happen. It should rarely happen because most, the vast majority of the time, the cops are just doing the best they can in that situation, in sometimes impossible situations. Mm -hmm. There are times when cops are just fucking douchebags. Like yeah. we all know the times, we've seen the videos, there's times when cops just straight up fuck up. Yeah. But the vast majority of the times, that cop has done thousands of arrests, has always done the right thing. It's only a matter of time before he does something that just doesn't look right or makes a mistake. Right. So the courts have to consider like this person's whole history of being a cop. Right. So it's like, dude, if you if you don't want people to be cops anymore, go ahead and start convicting cops for shit that just went wrong and they really didn't have a choice in the matter. Right. Because you start doing that, like, I mean, I fucking left as, as soon as the riots and all that shit was happening and I saw the department didn't have my back. Mm -hmm. I was like, fucking see you guys <laughs> because I ain't playing this game. I saw how the department was kind of like pandering to the media mm -hmm. and like selling out the cops. And I was like, I'm fucking out of here. I was like, I'm not doing that shit. And so... I'm telling you, you start putting cops in jail, a lot of them are just doing the best fucking job they can, and they're being put in impossible situations. Like, the vast majority of people, oh, training, oh, you're training. Like, motherfucker, I want to put you in the position where you have to make a decision right now as to whether or not to shoot or be shot or that split decision where everything's on the line and you better hope to God you made the right one. Right. It's fucking a horrible position to be in. Sit the fuck down! And now they check the house. I'm gonna help you guys, sir. We had another better in the closet, okay? But Parker, you can talk to my friends. You wasting time. The kids are not here. If you can please go inside and get my kids right now, you're wasting time. Stop! Don't push me. My babies are missing. What you doing? I found the kids. That sucks. That looks Bro. shitty. That's a bad day. This is, this is, people, it's so hard to talk on behalf of the police department because like people fucking hate cops. And it's like, you have no idea what they're going through. No idea. And like this scene is just an example of how fucked up humans could be. The fucking toddler and the young boy duct tape in a closet because they're probably crying and we're hungry. And they didn't have food, so these fucking crackheads just taped their mouth shut and taped their hands together and put them in a closet. And that's the kind of stuff that cops have to see regular basis, like all the time. It's fucked up stuff. You see the worst part of humanity, and then you're supposed to, like, be all kind and nice and, please do this, sir. You're my best friend. Like, fuck that. Like, people are so fucked up, and, and it weighs on you because after this call— and no matter how bad the call is, whether you go in and someone's fucking brains are blown out all over the wall or kids are duct taped in a closet or kids are murdered, fucking GPs had to go in and see kids, uh, toddlers drown in the bathtub by their parents. Do you get to go home for a day? Do you get to go fucking decompress? Do you go to psych? Fuck no. Write up your paperwork and get your ass back out there and go to the next call. It's such bullshit. And guess what? I don't care how fucked up you are mentally from what you just saw. You got to be here tomorrow at fucking start time. So it was eight in the afternoon, whatever your time starts, fucking be here ready to go at roll call to do it all again. And it's like all that shit just lives in your head and you just try to press it down and press it down and press it down. And then you, you find yourself fucking hitting the bottle or just stressed out of your fucking mind 24 seven. There's a lot of a lot of terrible things you have to see. And, and the rest of society don't wanna do those things. Yeah. They don't wanna see those things, but they want somebody to take care of it. Someone's gotta deal with it. But you're gonna let, you're gonna, you know, treat the people that do do it. You're gonna treat them like shit until yeah. they don't wanna fucking deal with you anymore. Because who wants to go to work and then be hated by everyone you're trying to 
help and support. You know? Yeah. It's fucking sucks. <laughs> Is that what your parties were like? Yeah. <laughs> are, you, yeah. are you serious? That's serious, yeah. <laughs> Have some respect, Lala. Don't light up in front of us. I'll just take a hit and hide. I'll chill you out. It'll be like back in the days. Fucking sit down, huh? Thank you. Thank you very much. So that whole, this whole scene, like, it's not a noise complaint right it's a noise complaint to your reason for going mm -hmm. but they already know that's a gangster house they're gonna know uh who's they already know like what gang is there they probably knows at least the homeowner mm -hmm. you know just from running the house so right. they have some information um and if it's that big of a gang house that it's probably just a constant be, constantly being watched by law enforcement you got detectives you got all kinds of people focusing on the house we know who where the gang houses are right uh, the vast majority of the time. So the whole noise complaint is just like, you don't show up to a noise complaint with like eight officers. Yeah, obviously. But, you know, they knew it's a gang house and it's an intel gathering opportunity. Okay. So what I would do if if I was like, oh, hey, that, that fucking huge gang house is lighting up with a party and we got a noise complaint, fuck yeah. So that's a, a reason to get in there. And that party is going to give us a chance to start gathering information on who's there. Because we already know that it's a gang house, guaranteed. We already know which gang, so now we can start connecting them. So what I would do, turn my body cam on, and I would just, while whoever's talking with them, asking them to turn it down, I'm walking past everyone trying to get camera view of their faces. I want as many views of faces as I possibly can. Mm. I want to see if I could find tattoos, colors, anything written on the walls, any fucking graffiti, anything I can get with my camera, I'm gonna walk real slow, and then we could just, take all that information and send it to the gang unit after mm -hmm. and they can start piecing names together with who's been hanging out at the house is it different gangs are they you know coming together for a big hit like it's just intel gathering right and a, a vast majority of good police work is just knowing your area knowing your players and doing good intel i'm gonna run you want to jam this wall yes i do Plate's clean What's our PC? Yeah. Oh, it's that stupid CD hanging from his rearview mirror. It's fucking his vision. <laughs> Let's do this. So that's that's how it goes. Is good police work is this is why I loved when I got to the small team because I didn't have to handle class ones anymore. Mm -hmm. So class ones are when the calls are coming in, and you have to handle those. But it's so much easier to find the bad guys when you have time to just like do surveillance. So like right now they know this is a the the gangster's house, right? Uh -huh. So I'm pretty sure this is the same house. Okay. And that's why they're like targeting these cops later on. This is like, this is their area. They know that's the gangster house. So they're they're doing surveillance on that house. Somebody pulls up and is like, obviously suspect as fuck looking. And then he's like, what's your PC? So what's your probable cause? You can't just go pull him over because he's suspect and he was at a known gang house. Mm -hmm. But in, even though like you, you, you know for a fact that he's a gangster in some way or connected because he's going to that house right? right but so what's the pc it was like oh he's got a cd hanging in his windshield mm -hmm. it's like all right well you can't have that and as long as it's a violation then we have probable cause to pull you over so you have to be careful about how far you take that based on just that because right. once that gets to court even though technically it's it's allowed once that gets to court it's weak as fuck and they'll look for that. It's like, oh, you pulled them over for a CD, but then you asked them to step out of the car. Right. Were you? Why were you so worried about them? Right. So you, you, you could use flimsy shit like that, but you really need to develop your, your uh, information quick. So you have really, if it does get to court and you find something substantial, you need to have a rock solid base to stand on, or they're just gonna walk. Mm. So if you do this like, oh, it, it was this, and it was like not really that, and it's not a good connection, they're just gonna walk in court. Mm -hmm. First measure 13, we're gonna send it to the unit. There you go, call for cover. Vamos, tu puerta, si no la abres. Shit. 
So the the main reason that they're able to just go in is because they heard someone screaming. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you hear someone screaming, you have every right to break down the door to go help them and see if they're in danger. But I just thought it was interesting because like when a lot of proactive cops will not call for cover unless it's absolutely necessary. And the reason for that is so when you do call for cover, people are like, oh, shit, this cop's calling for cover. We need to get there fucking now. Oh, okay. But then there's other cops who are scared and they call for cover on everything they go on. Oh. Yeah, you could send me another one. Yeah, you could send me somebody. Yeah, you could send me. It could be fucking nothing. And they're like, yeah, you could send me somebody. <laughs> and you're like, fuck me, dude. Now, like, you could be sitting there drinking coffee and they're like, yeah, just send me somebody. And you're like, it's a fucking alarm. Like, go check the fucking building. You have to get out of your car. Like, what do you need cover for? And then there'll be times, dude, there was one cop. And this cop, every time there was a hot call, like a gun call, uh -huh. like, oh, we got a guy with a gun. It was something super hot, like, oh, shit, we're going to get in a shooting. This cop would just not show up. He just, you don't get in trouble for that? Nope. Can't prove it. So if I'm a cop and I'm sitting somewhere doing something and I hear it come over the radio and all of us are supposed to go there, mm -hmm. I could just not go. Yep. And no one later on is going to be like, hey, where the fuck were you? Oh, we talk about it. But the sergeant's not going to do anything. He so didn't do anything. It's not an order he has to follow to go there? No. Hmm. Like, if you technically, you're, you have to go, right? But if it's a hot call, we're all racing to get there. Right. So you know that within, in a city like Denver, within two minutes, that place is going to be swarmed with cops. Right. No one's going to notice if you didn't show up or if you showed up so late that everyone's already handled it. Oh, okay. But there's been multiple instances where this particular cop is like a hot call. And all of a sudden, there's just nowhere to be found. And like, once we pick up on it, we start to look for it. And so then we'll just test ourselves and be like, ah, is this, this cop coming? And we look around and be like, even though they'll call out like on my way, or they'll call out code six, like they just got there. Okay. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm six on the scene. And we look around, they're not there. We're like, motherfucker, man. Why would they say they're there if they're not there? Because they don't want to get in trouble. And they want people to think like, put them code six. So it looks like they went. And they'll just park somewhere close or just keep uh, driving okay. around. Like some people just are so afraid of getting in trouble or getting like in an actual gunfight yeah. that they just won't go. Those are the ones that don't need to be cops. This particular person didn't wear a vest. So that's another <laughs> indicator that they knew they weren't going to sh show up to a hot call. And apparently still overall just not very intelligent. Yeah. But yeah, those are the ones that the ones that are scared, in my opinion, the ones that aren't comfortable in in a confrontation the ones that don't know how to like sort of just kind of take stock of everything that's going on are the ones that end up doing really stupid shit because they're mm -hmm. so afraid that they just do stuff and then they you know they make everybody else look bad as opposed to that cop who's like trained very well you know a lot of the guys that actually do jujitsu a lot of the guys that actually know how to control a person if they have to they're not so scared that the minute they yeah. feel like they're losing control of the situation they need to fucking shoot them right it's like those are the ones that just screw it all up it's like if you're going to be out there doing that you should be very well trained to be able to handle a situation so that you don't immediately resort to fucking deadly force. Like, yeah. there's, you know, like, do your job. But the the problem is the, the hiring practices. So, like, they got away from hiring tough people like uh, Cody Donovan. Uh-huh. He was, he put in, he's a, a former UFC fighter. Right. And they, he put in for it, for the police department. They turned him down because he was a UFC fighter. They didn't want his too much aggression. Right. I'm like, that's the best guy you that's want the on the street. Guy to be there. He's yeah. never going to get in a fight because he's just going to be like, boop. It's like, have you ever seen those videos of like uh, MMA fighters or just really good jujitsu practitioners where they're in a public space and yeah. something happens and they have to take care of it? They're so fucking calm. Yeah. Like there's a guy named Alex. Um, God, I can't remember his first name right now. Hall. Uh, and they call him the wizard. And he's in the UFC and he's really, really good. Oh, that's that guy that does those like weird barrel yeah, bolos and, and all that stuff. Yeah. And he's known for his 50-50 guard. So he, they're at a restaurant and some guy starts acting crazy and he's causing a problem. And then like, they're standing by for a while and finally he gets up to do it. And the people that work there, they're like, no, no, you shouldn't do it. He's, everybody's like, hey, just relax, he's good. Like everybody there collectively knew, don't worry, he's got it. And he goes over there and he grabs him and he just wraps him up, brings him down and then this guy's on the ground. Like he's so efficient at it mm -hmm. that he's not afraid because he knows exactly what to do. He doesn't, he doesn't feel threatened yeah. in that situation because he's so comfortable doing it. Those are the type of people, in my opinion, that should be out there handling those confrontations. Not somebody who is so afraid of any type of physical confrontation that they're just going to immediately hide behind their gun or their taser or whatever they can grab first, you know, because they're so afraid that they're they're actually going to have to control this person. Mm -hmm. 
And there's a lot of them. And so we know who they are. And so a lot of times, like when they get a call, we have to like the the people that like are okay with fighting and are okay with confrontation and do jujitsu and things like that. Mm -hmm. We have to rush to get to them because we know that if it gets physical, they're going to need us because they they can't do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what what are you gonna do? Like, you're gonna keep hiring these people because, like, you can't test for toughness. All right. And then they they can't fire them because they're so short on cops as it is that they literally just need bodies. So then it's like. You just hope that that cop understands their place mm. and is like, hey, just handle class ones. And when it's a hot call, let those other people do it that are better suited for it. Yeah, definitely. The basic the basic threshold for, you know, the case of being in fear for your life just needs to be much higher than it is for a lot of people. Yeah. Compton and 3-1-2. Where's, uh, where's uh, Taylor's ball? 13 after 13, sending an airship to set up a perimeter. Oh, shit. Would you uh, call for a rescue? Oh, oh fuck. What do you look like? Where do you go? Northbound through the houses. Oh, I ain't resisting. No! Don't fucking look at me! I ain't resisting, sir. Shut the fuck up! Get up! Put your hands over your head! Get up! All right, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. Oh, fuck right. up the rookie. All right, we're good. Fuck, man. Oh, okay. This is all fucking broken, man. Here's the tradition question in addition all right? So, hearing that scream, like, actually, we had a similar incident, and it was crazy because it was a T.O. and a rookie, and the T.O. and the rookie found a stolen car occupied. Uh-huh. And they should have done high risk stop when it's in like call them out, hands up, come back to us, and we stay in our car with the guns pointed at them. And instead, they approach the vehicle, and from what I remember, the fucking passenger gets out, takes off running. Mm -hmm. Well, the rookie chases them, and which is cool. That's what you know she wants to get the bad guy. But the problem is she's a rookie, and she was in one of the fucking hardest areas to memorize of the whole fucking. Um, district mm. like the roads don't make sense and they're fucking ridiculous and so she doesn't know where she's at and so there, and there's not even like enough signs in this area for her to look at a sign and call out so she catches the dude and she's by herself the to instead of going with her stayed at the car with the driver mm. so now she's by herself fighting with this big dude trying to get him and he starts to grab her gun and so i just hear over the radio and i'm way in the south and it's like five in the afternoon I don't even know where she's at and like to get all the way up there at five o'clock like there's no way it would mm. take me 20 minutes even at code 10 mm. to like get that far up so we're just like praying that her sector mates are gonna like get to her fast but they don't know where she's at and she does this blood curdling scream on the thing that's like he's got my gun oh, and it was God. so much fear in her voice that it made me curl like it, it it made me feel sick like i felt sick i thought i was about to to listen to a, a police officer get killed mm. and she never quit the next day okay. like she it was fucked and it was almost as bad as something like this yeah. and it could have easily been something like this it's fucking terrifying to hear her voice on the radio it like it's a it was a a panic that I will never forget because she she was in a bad, bad situation. Yeah. And it was to no fault of her own. She was doing what she was taught to do. She just, Tio should have went with her. Yeah. She, you know, she doesn't know where she is yet, so she can't even call out her location so we can come help. They should have done a high-risk stop. It, it's just a lot of shit went wrong. But, fuck, it was almost a bad day for her. I bet. Smile. And this is fucking horrible That's to terrible. watch. terrible, yeah. That big dude just beating her face in, and then there's nothing you can do because he gave up immediately. So now you just have to deal with it. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're clear, right? Go, 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 go. Does LA have a chase? No chase bus? I doubt it. They're on the fucking roof. Yeah. Fuck! Go, get the fuck out of the car! Go, go, go! So obviously they're baiting them mm -hmm. in. We I had a situation like that when I was on the small team, the impact team. Uh, me and my partner, Jordan, were, we got baited. Mm -hmm. So the car, we were in a gang area in downtown uh, Denver, and this car slow rolled us with no plates. And so we lit it up, and it just kept going. It wouldn't stop, but it was doing like five miles an hour. Uh -huh. So like, what the fuck? Like, he's not taking off, but he won't stop. And he pulls around, and keeps going, keeps going, and then he goes up an alley. And he just goes up, 
like this fucking tight alley like you can't really fit in and i was like it just felt bad Mm -hmm. so i was like nope not going in there and so he kept slow rolling up this alley and as soon as he realized that we weren't following him he stopped about mid alley Uh and then all of a sudden his hand comes out and he's like waving us to come on he's like come on come on and he's doing all this come on come on and we're like nah and then so jordan gets out and starts horning him like hey come back back up back up come to us and then he won't listen he's like come on come on and then we're like, nope, nope, come to us. And after a few call-outs, he realized we weren't going to go into the alley and it wasn't going to work. About 10 to 15 gangsters came out. And they just swarmed that alley. And they're like, fuck you, pigs. Fuck you. So, like, I don't know if they're going to shoot us, try to jump us or what. But there was at least eight dudes on this side and five dudes on this side. And then as soon as they realized we weren't coming out, all of them came out. Mm. And I was like, fuck, bro. We almost got baited into that shit. <laughs> So this scene, like, I understand where he's coming from, that he decides that is he, they got to move. But I'm going to be honest, like, if that was me, if I had already reached, if I had comms, uh-huh. so I could call cover, I could call backup, I'd be like, bring the city down on us. We're in a gunfight. Bring the city. Right. And it's funny because I got a buddy, Dan, and he was, we just broke roll call. And my dumbass decided to stay back and talk to my sergeant about something. I forget what. But Dan goes straight down south to our area. Mm -hmm. And then two minutes later, he goes, he goes, shots fired, shots fired, bring the city. And I was like, what the fuck? And there fucking dude got shot in the belly. One of the cops got shot in the belly with a rifle. Another cop got shot. And it's in my area. And Dan, who we just broke roll call together, because he went down, he's in it, and like pulling dudes out, and I'm fucking jackass doing code ten all the way down because I stood back that day to talk to my sergeant about something, pissed me off. Mm-hmm. I could have, but anyway, I would have been hit him with the Dan line and been like, bring the fucking city, and I got two minutes to hold it down. Mm-hmm. Like the whole fucking city will be there within, honestly, probably one minute. Right. At least ten cops within a minute are going to be surrounding that entire place. So I don't know if I would have decided to move out unless there was no comms. No comms, they're going to work in on you, Mm -hmm. and you're going to run out of ammo before they do. Okay. So I would get out. But with comms, and I can call for cover, I would just fatal funnel on the door. He takes the glass, and we back up into a corner, and we hold what we got until cover gets there. Shame for me. Who's pulling? people don't realize and this is another scene where it's like that's reality for cops Mm -hmm. like that's fucking reality is that there's so many people out there that would put a bullet in you just because you're wearing a badge put a bullet in you and spit on you and tell you rest in piss bitch and walk away and go celebrate yeah like that's the real shit that cops are dealing with that they know at all times that someone is out there daydreaming about putting a bullet in them and telling them to rest in piss bitch and but we're supposed to be all nice and huggy and friends with everybody and do the right thing all the time and never be fucking have you know high tension and yeah it's just fucking insane dude like i know i was only a cop for three years and i got my partner on the um, impact team was in two shootings he was shot once uh one of my classmates was shot Another one of my partners was stabbed in the armpit. Um, a rookie got shot in the belly. We had another rookie almost got shot in the face. The gun literally went off like right next to his face. And he could taste the gunpowder. And then luckily a dude was standing next to him and popped the dude in the face before he could get any more shots off. Like there were so many shootings all the time. Like this shit's fucking real. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not like a every once in a fucking great blue moon that cops are getting shot at. Like, in Denver, that shit was happening all the time. Yeah. And it's like, that is a possibility at at any point. 
especially during the riots, I felt like people, I felt like I was so close to being stomped out and just having a mob of people kicking my face in until I was dead mm -hmm. that I was like, people are fucking animals, dude. And especially in that mob mentality, mm -hmm. you get them in a riot and they're not humans anymore. They're fucking animals just looking to destroy anything. Yeah. SWAT saved my ass once because we ran out of pepper balls and they started, the crowd started moving in, rock started peppering us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, I was like, this is it, dude. These guys are about to stomp us the fuck out. Yeah. Like, what else are we going to do? We're surrounded by hundreds of people in the middle of the night. And we was only like three cops because we kept getting split up. Uh -huh. Everyone just kept getting broken up, chasing around mobs of people. And then right at the last second, fucking SWAT pulls up and starts hitting them all with gas. And I was like, whew, you guys just saved us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was about to get real bad. All right, guys. So that was it. That was end of watch. Sorry, it's a little, it's a little bit of a serious movie. Maybe a little controversial. But we support our police officers. I was a police officer. If you are a police officer, we support you and we thank you so much for what you do for this country. And just know that you are appreciated and we do think about the sacrifice that you make every day. It doesn't matter if you got in a shooting or if you shot somebody. We know that when you go out there, you risk it for us every single day. And if we need you, we can pick up a phone and you will be there without any question at all whatsoever. So thank you so much for what you do. We hope you guys appreciate this episode. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.